Yesterday, a major development that could be another step in getting us out of the COVID-19 pandemic. Millions of kids could be vaccinated against COVID by Halloween. News parents have been waiting for for over a year and a half. Pfizer says medical trials show its COVID vaccine is safe for children aged 5 to 11. But as we've become so familiar with since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, seeing that light at the end of the tunnel will require patience. More patience. Good morning. This is Bay Current for Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. We always have to remember this is a company statement, a company press release, and this still hasn't been put in front of the FDA. And and so I think we have to also be cautious about that as well. Uh, and just like we, you know, with the whole situation with the boosters, uh, there's still a lot of process that we need to go through to confirm that the vaccines are both effective and, and, and safe. KCBS Radio's Holly Kwan and Dan Mitchinson spoke with Dr. Peter Hotez, Dean of the National School of Tropical Medicine at Baylor College, for the Ask an Expert segment. And patience and proceeding with caution was his main word of warning. The hope is that if all the stars align, it gets put in front of the FDA. The FDA gives it the thumbs up for emergency use authorization maybe later in the fall. Um, that, that we could have some of these vaccines released for school-age kids. And, and we don't even know if they are going to need boosters or when they might need boosters because of the difference in, in the dose and how much they need. That, that's, that's absolutely right. And, you know, one of the issues we're going to get into is because people are anxious to have their kids vaccinated sooner rather than later, we'll probably do the same thing we did with when we released the vaccine to uh, older Americans last December, January, which is we'll give that three weeks, three to four weeks apart uh, between the first and second dose. Uh, and that works really well in terms of inducing immunity, but then um, it can wane. And that's why we would give that third immunization six to 12 months later. In fact, this is what we do for most of our pediatric vaccines. You give a rapid succession of what we call primary immunizations. You wait six months to a year and then boost. And and we'll probably see something like that with the young kids, two doses uh, early on and then a wait and then a boost. A lot of questions from our listeners already sent in. Let's start with this one. Can the doctor this morning comment on the data or studies of myocarditis that has occurred in children, especially boys, after getting the COVID vaccine? I really want to get my kids vaccinated, but I'm so concerned about this potential side effect and the dangers of it. Yeah, no, it's a it's a fair question. You know, it, with um, with the the myocarditis that was seen after the mRNA vaccines, whether it's from Pfizer or Moderna, the rate was still pretty rare, but a little higher in the younger age groups, a little higher in the young adults and adolescents. It was around twelve per twelve per million, around one in eighty thousand, um, and so it's still extremely rare, but. The reason why the FDA and everyone else is being so cautious is to make certain it doesn't go up even more with the younger kids, and that's and that was the reason, one of the major reasons why, you know, we were we were strongly recommending against going rogue and trying to get get your younger kids vaccinated ahead of the, ahead of these data. So hopefully, all of that information will come out in the filing with the FDA, and then, and that's what the FDA is going to be looking at among other things. One of the voices every morning on KCBS radio throughout this entire pandemic, bringing so much news, information, perspective from around the Bay Area is KCBS radio's Matt Bigler. And and Matt, I wanted to catch up with you to talk about this because, uh, interestingly, you had a chance to uh, speak with some folks and, and get some sort of reaction from parents, folks out in the community. We'll get to that in just a bit. But this is really a piece of, of news, a piece of information, an announcement, if you will, that a lot of folks have been waiting for. When can kids get vaccinated? Hi, Matt. Well, what we know is what Pfizer says is that their vaccine is safe and quote, very effective for kids between 5 and 11 years old. Previously, kids 12 and over could get the vaccine 
Now they say their clinical trials are wrapping up and it it looks like it works. It works on kids and it's safe. And that's what parents really want to know. The other thing, you know, the big question is, when can get, they get their kids vaccinated? Uh, it will be soon. We don't know exactly when, but it will be soon. The next step is all that clinical trial data has to be released, has to go to the FDA. The FDA panels have to look at it, ask questions of Pfizer and um and BioNTech, the two companies that worked on this vaccine. And then if they determine that they think it's safe, then they might go ahead and authorize an emergency uh, or give an emergency approval to the vaccine. That starts the, the, the timeline to uh, be able to recommend this for anybody in that age group who wants to get the shot. It could be next month, possibly by Halloween is what we're hearing, uh, or, or um, October 30th hmm. is uh, one of the dates that is being kicked around, but it, it'll happen within the next month and a half or so, is my guess. There are still a number of legs in this process to go, and I'm most curious about how they roll this out for kids, because it was a, a, a pretty clear, for the most part, pretty clear process, right? Mm -hmm. with, with the first, you know, the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines, uh, folks who fell into certain categories of uh, conditions that met criteria for uh, early vaccination, then there were folks in certain uh, elderly age groups and then the rest of us uh, got access all of us at the time what 16 and over do we know how they're going to or planning to roll this out which kids would get shots first that's a great question and i think all of those all that planning is happening behind the scenes right now uh, i've talked to mm. school districts who are hoping to offer these shots at schools uh, but they have to get mm. uh, they, they're working with the county health departments they're working with uh, the county uh, school, uh, school districts, uh, the school office of education. Uh, and so there's a lot of players that have to sort all these the logistical questions out. But as far as I know, anyone in that age group, 5 to 11, once the vaccine, once the Pfizer vaccine is approved, they can get the shots. The question is where and when. And like I said, school districts are hoping to open up vaccination clinics right on campus, right on elementary school campuses. That'll probably look like the way that previous school clinics have looked. They're outdoors. They're under a tent. Of course, this is in the we're getting into the fall and winter, but it'll be outdoors in some kind of an enclosed area. <laughs> and then uh, with parent approval, that's another big thing about this. The parents have to sign off, of course, because these are minors. Uh, they can get their shots right at school. In my story today, I pointed out this is kind of ironic because when when kids, younger kids started going back to school, a lot of parents were concerned about exposure to the virus. Now it looks like that sure. is where they'll get their shots. They'll get protected at school. So it's all kind of nice how it's working out. Parents you spoke to, what are they saying about this? Well, I talked to a lot of relieved parents. I, I interviewed a grandmother who said, great, it's about time. Now my grandbabies can get vaccinated. Um, so I think that the perspective from parents is going to be how they feel about getting the shot themselves. If there's hesitancy among parents, then they're probably not going to have their kids get vaccinated. If they're against the vaccine, they're not going to uh, allow their kids to get the vaccine. On the other hand, if parents have been vaccinated even before it was fully approved, then they're going to be the first ones in line. So I think it really depends on what, you know, what your vaccine philosophy is. Hopefully at this point, since we know that it has been proven to be safe and effective and fully approved for adults, then uh, that is the next step that will happen for kids as well. The full approval will happen in you know the coming months. Final thing, Matt, and, and I, neither one of us will, will have the answer. And I think the answer is, is probably more of a, a legal one and not a moral or ethical one. But it's going to come up eventually, and that is... You're going to have kids who want to get the vaccine and their parents don't want them to get the vaccine for whatever reason. Parents aren't vaccinated. They, they don't trust it. They don't believe whatever the case may be. It just makes me wonder what that conversation is like for a school administrator or a teacher or even a doctor who has a kid, wants the vaccine, but they just can't give that kid that shot because their parents won't sign off on it. I think you probably just described a legal case in the making. And I, I, like you said, I'm sure it'll happen. I, I'm speculating here, but maybe a grandparent could take their uh, their relatives to court to insist that their you know, the younger kids get vaccinated. I mean, that's possible. 
Um, I'm, I'm not a legal expert. Whether or not you know a minor can bring a legal cases gets complicated, but yeah, that could happen. I think from the school's perspective is they are going to have a, have a conversation about what do we require of students. Uh, I know that's already happening at, uh, at the high school level. That's happening at middle school levels because schools have been requiring vaccines for decades, right? They, you have to get a shot before you can go to class so you don't spread disease around. Well, this is just the most recent vaccine, and schools are slowly starting to require that uh, as soon as it gets full FDA approval. I think that'll happen at elementary schools, too. It's just a matter of time. Special thanks again to KCBS Radio's Matt Bigler along with Holly Kwan and Dan Mitchinson from the KCBS Morning News, and Dr. Peter Hotez, Dean of the National School of Tropical Medicine at Baylor College of Medicine and co-director of the Center for Vaccine Development at Texas Children's Hospital. As always, stay connected to the very latest on the COVID-19 pandemic and all of your Bay Area news at kcbsradio.com and the Odyssey app, where you can also find podcasts like this one. That's what's in the Bay Current today. I'm Matt Pittman. We'll chat tomorrow.